this is a textbook example of how you know you're sawing flat wood and when you dry it, it's going to stay flat. This is important. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Hey folks, welcome back to uh, Hobby Hardwood Sawmill. I am Robert Milton and we are doing some walnut today. I really don't know what I do on these videos, what I'm going to do when I get started. I don't have a script or anything. I just start getting into sawing and something catches my eye and I try to make a, a video about that figure if it's interesting to me it may be interesting to you guys so the first thing we really want to do is we want to figure out what's going on here and you always want to look at the best face you've seen videos of me say always saw the best face first always try to reduce tension always try to get the most value out of you it's got one big stress crack in it it's got a lot of sapwood it's got a great big defect it's got a chunk out of it and if you sight down it, you can see where it really starts to change geometry. It's got a goose egg. On top of everything else, it's got a twist to it. This is going to cause the boards to warp if I'm not careful when I saw it. So we have a expensive, funky, kink twisted walnut log with a big chunk take it out of the side. Yeah, baby. No problem. We can do this. It ought to be fun though. So what we need to be looking at, of course, we need to be looking at the stress. The stress is going right here. Um, it's kind of not really where I want it. I'm going to have to get it up on the mill and roll it around a few times to look at it. But the only thing that does jump out at me, look at how straight this face is right here. This is a good one. I'll be concentrating on that one. You look at this from this side look at how bad that one is now what I may end up doing I want to get my good boards off the good face but see this top face what I may end up doing I'm doing a cut from right there all the way down and taking that defect off over here now that kind of violates the whole parallel bark sawing technique that I like to espouse because parallel bark sawing reduces stress in the wood by the same token if you parallel bark saw this hunk of wood look you run out of wood right about here so you got to do something different you got to change the game plan so right now i know i've got one good face that i can concentrate on should give me some good boards there i got one ugly face and I've got two other faces I haven't looked at yet until I put it on the sawmill and start rotating it around and eyeball it. So that's next. Let's get this sawmill cranked up. Now this board will be all sap with one face. I'm gonna rotate now. Definitely did not go deep enough. The boards that we sell are 100% hardwood on one face. This is the one we knew we were going to have some issues with. I'm looking real hard at the stress. You can see the little gap here, little gap there, but by and large, the whole thing is shifting sideways. So when you're sawing for money, money matters. As I'm looking at this log, I'm seeing that it's way, very unbalanced. This is the center. I've got wood in this direction. I've got wood in this direction. But now my question is, do I keep taking wide boards knowing I'm trapping sapwood, or do I start rotating and taking boards off each corner, which is what I'm gonna do. So what I'm really trying to do is find out as I take boards off each face. It's not the fastest by any means. On this board, since it's not root, on this log, since it's not behaving predictably, I'm gonna scout it a little bit. So I'm gonna take a face, a board off each face, and I'm gonna to try to figure out where the stress is. That's gonna dictate how I'm gonna saw the rest of the log. When using a chain turner like on this one, I could use a log clamp. 
you got to be really careful not to scratch the faces of the boards off. Or if you are going to scratch them, scratch them where the sack wood is. That's coming off anyway. So I'm going to start a little high. I'm going to go down to pattern mode now. Hit this button. It's going to drop. That's even with the face. This is the next cut. That's the beauty of a good computerized set work. It allows you to do this kind of stuff without losing your place. Very little stress on this face. I'm looking at it. I'm not seeing it. This face is clean. Look how little sawdust is on it. Um, clean face, clean face. Little defect right here. I can work with it. So I'm going to rotate it again. And I want to look at this face. So this face had a little stress, not bad. This one had a little stress, not bad. I'm interested in that face and especially that face, the last face. It lined up on the next cut. This one is showing some stress, which is unusual because the stress is actually in the wrong direction. It's up here a little bit, but look how high it's getting over here. See that? So that's twist. This is trying to go that way. It's unusual because I've got this part check in this direction. This would be the side not likely to twist. It may simply be that I've got so much here that it's causing this to lift off. Either way, I'm done with this face. I think it looks pretty good. I'll edge it, and here's a knot defect right here, which is good. I'm putting it in the corner the way I want it to be. Using this technique, you only put your knots in the corner instead of the center of the board. I'm going to flip down and see this guy, and I'm going to look at my set works and see how tall that board or how wide that board will be. Right now, I'm about 13 and 11 sixteenths. So. I am going to go ahead and rotate over. Again, this is not the fastest technique, but this is high value wood. Sometimes you have to slow down and read the log and read the cant. This one's not acting the way I would expect it to necessarily. Nothing I can't deal with. I just want to make sure it's doing what I want. I'm the one running the sawmill. It's not. I'm in control. It's not. So I need to make sure of that. Interestingly enough, this board showed almost no face stress. It's showing to lay pretty flat. You can see where this scooted over, so it's got stress in that direction, which makes sense because remember, this face and this face were jacking up. This is about opposite what it should be doing because this is indicating the stress is in this direction. What I may end up doing take another couple boards off here at least one more to balance. I may take another board off here to balance this up matter of fact I know it will come to here now the center pith is going to be centered and then I can start taking from here and here but at this point since the widest part of the cant is not showing stress and that allows me to get wider boards Very little stress again. I'm gonna come back and get another one. So I'm a little over eight and a half now. That's about as far as I want to go down. This board is showing very little stress. Now I know I want to saw or mill from the narrow end at this point. I don't really need to look at those other faces. I do need to flip it over. Yeah, that's money. Not bad. Let me stack these guys. Let's get to saw on that other one. Anytime you do this much moving around, 
You also want to see how flat the tank stays. So you want to actually do a skim cut every now and then to just check it to see if it's moving. Put about eight and a half to go down one more on this one. Still off center. I need to go one more. Uh, this will be good. Now I'm just going to flip this up to drop on it all the way down. So I get asked this all the time about how fast I'm cutting. In case you're wondering, if you look at where you just saw, you will see scratch marks left by one or two odd misset teeth. In my case, on this board, or this cant, I'm sawing at about three and a half inches per band rotation. That's my advance. That's pretty fast. This is a textbook example of how you know you're sawing flat wood, and when you dry it, it's gonna stay flat. This is important. See these boards right here. Look here, you see how they're going up, staggering out? That means that the stress, when I'm sawing, is causing them to curve this direction, which is fine because this, is, this will make the boards curve a little bit when I edge them. I can edge them off or it may not curve that much. The main thing though is we know the stress is in that direction simply because the boards are flat. They're laying flat and they're pushing this way. Sometimes they'll push that way, it doesn't matter. But you can see how far each board is. Instead of staying right on top, you can see how far they're moving. Now what's odd about this is this is the heart check. This would indicate that the board should be flexing up and down like this. So in this case, the stress is exactly opposite the indicated direction that would be in the log. But look at how much these boards had shifted over from sawing. It's like a stack of cards. Really, really important. I'm gonna to try to get it. There we go, that's a good view of it. The curves are flat, the boards have shifted. Is that worth the price of tuition? This log is behaving opposite what I would expect and you saw how I have to basically go around I got to scout it out and now I'm gonna every single board I pulled off is gonna be flat even though the indicated stress markers in the log are 90 degrees to where they're actually showing up this is why this is this important to pay attention to what you're doing and this is an exciting log this is one of the reasons I like sawing I get surprised every now and then but that doesn't mean I still can't handle it and that means you can handle it. You watch this video, you'll know how to handle it. This is cool. This is why you run a sawmill. Woo, barely. This is a good log. Look at that. Just barely cleared this other stack on top of it. Now let's look at how pretty the boards are. All hardwood. We've got the stress trap the way we want it. And once again, we are a happy professor. Happy sawmiller. Just a happy guy. If you don't believe it. Well, you know, I'm generally pretty happy. So let's get this one put away and we'll get to the next log. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a fun one for me. Um, 
it's one of the things I really like about sawmilling is that you never know what to expect. No matter how many logs you've sawn, there's always a fun one that pops up at you. This was a fun one for me. It did almost exactly opposite of what I initially expected. However, once I kind of scouted it out, which I showed on the video, you can see how I own this bad boy. And now I got some beautiful wood. It's going to be flat. It's going to be straight. We may have to edge it, but either way, this was a win. It's a, and I hope you guys had fun watching me have fun at the Hobby Hardwood Sawmill. Y'all have a good time. We will see y'all next week. Bye. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.